And here comes another episode of Conscious Aging, brought to you by thewisdomfactory.net. I'm Mark Davenport, and I'm a space holder for the real creator of these programs, my Heidi. partner, Heidi. Heidi Hanlein, or Adi Heidi Hanlein, that would be my birth name. Yeah, she's right here in virtual reality. Before <laughs> we meet our guest, though, she has a few words to talk to tell people about how to get the most out of the show. Can you go Yeah, ahead? in case you are on YouTube, uh, we won't monitor any comments there. And please go to the wisdomfactory.net live streaming and you will be transported to our event page of today. And as we are showing uh, these cards, I would also like to show you this card because when you are interested in age aging but not only getting old age is really beginning quite at the beginning of our lives anyway come to our facebook group masterminding integral aging i much appreciate your participation yes <laughs> and your wisdom all old, old folks have wisdom, you know? How do they? And young folks. So today we will talk also about young folks. That's true. Okay. 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 <laughs> but anyway, thank you, Heidi. And so now we go to say hello to our intriguing guest with the unusual hat. Fred, say hello. Hello. I'm Fred Jones. I'm in Victoria on Vancouver Island, British Columbia, Canada. So. Okay. Great. And Mark and Heidi, appreciate it. Okay. And Fred, yeah, you, you talk about embracing change as an important aspect of, uh, of growing older. Uh, and a special piece of that work is uh, with young people for whom we can be a great resource. Not that we ever thought so about our grandparents, maybe, but, but maybe even we could be models for how to navigate the changes that does but yeah and uh, we are missing role models today in this society which is so changing so quickly changing and mm -hmm. it seems that somebody has done some work on it and yeah. this somebody is our guest <laughs> yeah that's right and i'm just thinking about this as we be, we're getting ready that we don't really know many young people when, when i was young i knew old people but now that we're old, actually, no young people. Yeah, my cousins, not cousins, my the the children of my brothers and sisters and their children. The, they we know the old, others that you see once every two years. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's go to Fred. All right. You are working with young people, so you have a way to get to know them. Can you talk a little yeah. bit about? Yeah, what you are doing, doing, what you are up to, and it's the whole hour is for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much for having me. The I, I've found out that the highlight of my week is when I have a people calling me Fred. I have friends from the age of six to sixteen, which is absolutely amazing for me at my age because I'm seventy-five. This is the highlight of my week whenever I spend time with them. This is become something that become a passion of mine trying to help them with the changes that they're about to face and I look at all the cha challenges that I've had during my life the changes and the challenges and I realize that I can help them as well changes they're about to face because as Heidi said there's a lot of changes coming in in, in today's world so it I found this to be um, very invigorating and also keeps you young when you have a lot of young people around you. Yeah, so, this is great. Yeah. How did you uh, get involved in this? Yeah, because so many of us are kind well, it, of isolated. Yeah. You know, it's very interesting. Uh, I joined Toastmasters about uh, 14 years ago, and they had in some of their publications comment about youth leadership program. And I looked at that and I said, what is that? No one seemed to know, but it was sort of a, an orphan because Toastmasters is for adults, 
but they had this program for young people. So I so I just got books and I said, okay, let me try and run one of these. And I ran one knowing nothing except from the books. And that was about um, 12 years ago. Over the years now, I've just got so involved with that. It's uh, been an eye opener in me. The only challenge is I find that Toastmasters is for adults and this is sort of an orphan. And I've taken it further and I say, well, this is so important. I remember how I would not speak at school. I was very, very shy. I wish I had the opportunity to learn how to speak and communicate and get the self-confidence that this offers them. So that's why I, I think I, it appealed to me. I thought, oh, I wish I had this when I was young. And now it's gone so far. I've been involved for so many years with so many groups. Well, I still work with Toastmasters and groups, but I feel I can, must go further. And that's why I started OurFutureLeaders.ca. I'm looking to start online groups like we are talking online so that young people from all around the world can communicate with each other in one place. Like you're in Europe and I'm in North America. I want the same for youth to be able to do that. And what this helps them with is communication, learning to work with each other, leadership which to me is the real element we need leaders in the world today if you look around the world there aren't a lot of powerful positive leaders i i really find a challenge even in my own country i look and say we do have some but not enough we need more leaders especially with the change and that's my passion i want to change the world by helping some young people become leaders what this is all about in my opinion Ah, that's exactly where the future is now and what we could do. Uh, for us, it's still an enigma how to address younger people, yeah. especially when we do shows for old people, <laughs> conscious <laughs> aging. But actually, we had a, a person who was is, is quite young, 30-something, and he was interested in, in aging well, and his idea was about living longer, so extending lifespan. So some young people begin also to consider age as a topic. But uh, for most, uh, it's just how to live life and how to go on with life. And they need over us <laughs> sooner or later. So I think the best thing is what we can do, find a way to, to share our experience with them, which doesn't mean that they have to do the same things, no, but no. just tell them that to make their experiences and maybe they don't have all the time reinvent the wheel. <laughs> so what I'm interested in doing, I know you are going somewhere abroad to, to do something and how is your work with the young people, how is that unfolding? Well, maybe it would help to explain what I do with them and how it works. Because I don't really lecture them. I'm not a teacher. I'm more of a facilitator, coordinator. And they run the meetings, and they participate, and they ha find their voice by that. If I stand there and start telling them all my wisdom that I have from all my years, it goes in one ear and out the other. So I find that they are very wise and ultimately realized that they know more than we give them credit for. Outstanding, amazing young people in this world. And you put them together and it is absolutely astonishing to me how much they know. We don't give them credit. We're so used to, oh, we're going to lecture not what I believe. I believe that they can learn and teach each other so much more than I can teach them. So the groups that we get together, we give them roles, and it's very similar to what we did in Toastmasters, but I've taken it a little bit further. We have for different roles. Somebody will be a mystery master this meeting. And mystery master means it's like show and tell. They'll come and bring something and say, oh, this was something, and talk, and just talk in front of people. And then we'll have maybe some of them will prepare a speech, or we'll have impromptu speaking, where we'll ju they'll just throw out questions and they'll talk. 
And then the real key is the feedback. And they will evaluate and say, oh, when you were doing this, you, you could have done that a little bit better. And they learn how to give feedback and communicate with each other. And that is really the, what I call the secret sauce. And so I have a whole lot of roles that I give them. In fact, I'm going to Australia and I just uh, printed out all of the roles. So we start out and said, who wants to count um, how many times other people interrupted each other? And we call them the interrupter counter. And who wants to count how many filler words were used? Oz, um, so's. Mm -hmm. And who wants to tell a joke? And so I have a, about a dozen different roles. And sometimes we have two or three people who tell jokes. And you just give them roles, and then you have people who do the feedback and, and coaching. And they are, end up coaching themselves, and they learn from each other. It's amazing to watch. And the wisdom that they have is absolutely outstanding. I also use uh, the, which I am quite surprised, John Wooden was a very well-known coach, basketball coach, and he had what he called the pyramid of success, and has a lot of items like, um, I've actually got it it's on the other side of the room, I'd have to go get it, because I just printed them out for when I go to Australia, but it has things like uh, honesty, and then they might just talk what their ideas are about honesty, or cooperation. Uh, go around the table and just talk about that and in an hour or an hour and a half depending how many they just keep doing this and they meet and they discuss and they have different topics and they give points of view and it gives them self-confidence and the ability to communicate which are what leaders need leaders need this is what they're learning so in that group uh, gives them confidence. Sometimes they don't want to say. They're very shy, like I was when I was young. Say, sit and watch. Don't do anything. And then ultimately they'll say, oh, next week I'll, I'll see how many. I'll be the interrupter counter. I'll just sit here and count that. Or I'll be the quiz master. I'll ask questions about what was said to see how well you were listening. So that's how the groups work. And as an elderly person, I, I actually do very little. Occasionally, they will ask me, do you want to say something? And I say, yeah, I've got lots to say, but you don't want to ask me. You, I'd rather hear you. Let them do it. And it, it's quite difficult to watch. So, so how, it okay. how, how old are these people, these young people? They range from 6 to 16. And, and that's, that's one of the secrets as well, is a diversity. The more diverse the group, the better. Uh -huh. Six. It's often siblings from the same family. Now, this is also unusual because normally when you're in school, you're in, you know, all of the six-year-olds are with the six-year-olds and the 14-year-olds and the 14-year-olds. By having family members, brothers and sisters in the same group, it's amazing to see the dynamics. This is something they can all do together. And sometimes the younger people have less teenage angst. When they get older, they say, oh, no, I, I don't want to do this. And you'll have a 10-year-old, which will do things that a 14-year-old wouldn't do. And they say, how come he's doing that? Why am I not doing that? And they feed off each other. And when I said six-year-old, uh, it's normally a younger sibling of someone they got either an older brother or sister in the, in the group. If you just put a six-year-old in on their own, it's pretty unusual. You will find eight- and nine-year-olds will join the group on their own, but a six-year-old normally would needs an older sibling. But they work well, and I know the six-year-old. I have, well, he's now, I think he's 12 years old, but I started with him when he was six. Absolutely amazing young man now. Just phenomenal to see how, how he's grown over the years. And some of the parents say, you've changed my children's life. They've now... You know, just become, they found their own voice and they found they can be a leader. It's amazing. So, what seems to me that you are uh, practicing, or how do you say, be a pioneer in a new education system because, and also the communication, for instance, in, in, when people in a family, the siblings learn to communicate in such a way, the family will be different. And if people could learn like this at school, 
speak. I know there are some very few experiments in this direction in, in Germany, in Berlin is a school which works more or less like this, where the teachers are facilitators and not don't <laughs> give talks. But normally it's not like this. So how, how is that possible? Who is, you know, is there an official, um, how can I say, official support for that? Or do you have to, to do everything privately? Well, I, I, I find that the school system is very, um, I guess you would say, it, it has a lot of rules and regulations. It's almost like any government department and it's very slow to change. And there's a lot of educators who realize uh, I think Montessoro School, for example, full of a different approach, and there are different approaches, but the general government-run schools are still have to have all of their rules and regulations, etc. It's very slow to change. School systems, I'm sure that I have adapted this sort of process, but to have six-year-olds with 16-year-olds is not the norm anywhere in sports or in school ability to communicate with each other and and cooperate and help each other and mentor each other is just absolutely amazing to see how it works so um, sort of an addendum to schools uh, um, we could be done after hours from home and they can just join the groups. And my challenge is to find the technology, and that's why I got involved with Google Hangouts to see how that works. And there are other technologies that are coming down the pipeline. Yeah. And to be able to do that, I could have young people all around the world joining these groups and just communicating with each other. That's yeah. what I envisage. But the leadership is where I really see what to change the world. We definitely need better leaders than we have. And leadership is really one of my passions as well. How do we make better leaders? Yeah, and to that, we, oh, sorry. Yeah. to that we have a comment from Vivek, who is in the audience, and he says, I have been to Toastmaster events here in UK, but in my view, that helps a person to speak in public, but I'm not sure that gives them leadership skills. What do you say to that, Fred? Well, by running your own meetings, by organizing and giving feedback, this is the leadership skills. And if you look at leadership skills, there's a lot. I mean, I, I podcast, but here's here's a couple things on leadership. So, for example, I don't know if you can read this. It says, mm -hmm. um, you know, communications and confidence, positivity, um, fairness. Mm -hmm. That's those are skills from leadership, and also honesty, and commitment, and uh, in, in being inspiration and humility. There's about those are eight. This is what they learn, and those are leadership skills. So that's my answer to Vivek. <laughs> you definitely <laughs> learn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What I would like to know, uh, you said that one boy came when he was six and then he is now 12. So it seems to be an ongoing group which you are doing for many, many, many years. Is it a constant group or come other people? Uh, go, do they get out? Do they get in? Uh, are there girls too? I mean, is, how is the proportion between boys and girls? Actually, at the moment, one of my groups has got more girls than boys. Uh, the boys feel a minority. <laughs> but, uh, it, it varies, and it does change. It's not as if they stay for six years. That's one example. And and that young fellow is no longer in the group. He's gone on to bigger and better things. He's, he loves the stage. He's on stage. He's singing and dancing uh, for the amateur dramatics and so on. So he does a lot. But... Occasionally, it comes and helps me. If I'm not able to be at a face-to-face -face group, his sister, he's got an older sister, and they'll come and run it for me because I'm not able to do it. And they, they're able to do that. At the age of 14 and, and 12, they're mentoring other people. So that's phenomenal as well. That, again, is leadership. 
Sure yes. is. And, I, and that brings up a point. You'll be going to Australia, so you obviously won't be in BC. So the group when you're when you're out of the country. They they'll run it themselves. Yeah. Um, they know how they've been doing it for four years. They 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 know how to run it. They just run it. The other group I have is a new one, a newer startup. I have a, a 17 year old uh, girl who's helping them. She was there last year and then said, "Oh, I'll volunteer to help it." She knows it, it's a. All they do is say, "Oh, what what I'm going to be doing this uh, week?" I, I've written a, a a manual of all my experience. This is this is the manual, and in there. I, I don't. They don't need this, but this is for adults who say, "How do I do this?" And somewhere <laughs> in here, here I, I've got all sorts. This is just. But here's, for example, the impromptu speaker coach. This would say, as impromptu speech coach, I provide feedback to the speakers on their impromptu speech responses. The purpose of this is to assist to improve our impromptu speaking skills. That's what a young peer person at the beginning of the meeting says, that's what I'm going to do, and they just read out their roles. Mm -hmm. These roles printed out and, and all uncounter and word of the day. And so they they then do that. So it's 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 all I just give them up. Here are the different roles, they read them out and then they do them. And and this 17-year-old girl has done them, so if they need any help, she can help them. Yeah. Uh, it's like a package. Once you start it, and once it starts rolling, they just start pick it up, and they they learn so quickly. It's amazing. They progress faster than the adults. <clears throat> well, when you when you go to Australia, will you be working under the auspices of Toastmasters there also? You're, no, no, no. It'll be completely. No, as I said, it's an orphan Toastmasters. Like I, I volunteer. I am the what they call the for the our district which is southern british columbia probably about 150 toastmasters club i work as the youth uh program coordinator mm -hmm. for them so i help them but it is not high um, high priority it's actually very low priority in toastmasters so we don't get a lot of credibility but i do help them but i, I figure there's so much more that can be done so what I'm doing in Australia is with a, another group of um, coaches who are coaching young people, and they ask me uh, while I'm there, would I help them and set it up, and then leave it with them, and they'll continue after I come back in uh, in January. Okay. So this is great. I'm just looking for anyone. I, I, I you don't have to be a Toastmaster. This is nothing to do with Toastmasters, as far as I'm concerned. What I'm doing, okay. I have to go through Toastmasters. It's all oh, they, they have their uh process and so on and really they don't it, it's not high priority that's all i can say yeah. okay so they're coming back to to my question which uh, vivek also didn't understand well i was asking you do you have public support and he said if you do it as toastmaster so the organization will support you but now you said you're not doing it uh, a toastmaster so how did you organize that did it appear <laughs> sort of by itself and now it runs by itself without uh, any you know normally you have to do publicity and bring people in and remind them of the next uh, uh, appointment and stuff like this H how does it work well i'm i'm busy working on the online side that's where my priority is so i'm still looking for a pilot project i'm sending out to homeschool homeschool uh, parents who are homeschooling their children seem to appreciate this more than any. It's one area. It's like a target market. So I'm actually homeschool groups, and my and I've got some young people. I'm saying, let's do a pilot because we got to get the technology that they will accept. It. It's all right for me to say, oh, let's use Google Hangouts, but if they don't want to use that, that's like, for example, when we were talking about light streaming the other day, technology that would work. So mm -hmm. I want them to look again. I'm trying to uh, get young people. So my I'm moving away from the uh, Toastmaster what I've been doing and setting up our future leaders to say, look, there's so much more that needs to be done, so much more that can be done, and I'm looking to do it online. So I've only had a few small trial groups of with Hangouts, with with online, uh, locally. 
and I'm now looking to try and spread it and, and say, okay, how do I find it? So when I'm in Australia, I've got some of the people here, the young people, I'm going to be hooking up with my two grandchildren, which are uh, 14 and 12, with them and try and do some of this online because they're familiar with it and try. And so it's still early days, but mm -hmm. at the moment, it doesn't need any support. I mean, does, uh, like financial support or anything. So I'm trying to get the word out, and that's why I'm happy I'm on your today. So mm -hmm. maybe someone else will say, hey, yeah. and maybe they know of some bright young people who know technology better than any of us that they would use. They all know they better will see us. <laughs> They know it better. But you know what I find also intriguing, apart from you working with that, but your day has only, I guess, 24 hours, so at the end you won't be able to run all the groups. What I find a brilliant idea is to teach other people also teachers, for yep. instance, you know, to how to do that, or parents, so that they do uh, groups between yep. themselves. So yep. how can they contact you? How can they find out? Would you be willing to make groups for parents, <laughs> for instance? Yeah, yeah, my, that's my plan. So if they contact me at my website, which uh, I think you've, it's on, my, on there, but it is ourfutureleaders.ca. Mm -hmm. I can offer them all sorts of material. I've even got a, I've even got a parent's guide that I, I've written, That's which will help parents on their own. And it helps them develop a lot of the skills, including leadership skills, social skills, just, just little things that parents can do. Uh, creativity. I've given these activities, suggested activities that they can do with their children. So these are the sort of uh, just just so that they can realize that these are the sort of skills that children need in the future, changing so fast. If they don't have these skills, they are not going to be as successful as they could be. Yeah, because, and it is. And they also need. Yep. I wanted to say it's in our own interest as older people that the future leaders are skillful, <laughs> that the future leaders do a good job, because if they are full of sort of learned things, yes. which you learn at school, but they don't know how to really respond to the challenges of the world, who are not, what you say, mm -hmm. eloquent and, and, sure. uh, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, cannot speak with other leaders, let's say, Say, you know, we, we have that now in countries that they cannot speak together, no? the leaders of certain countries. And if that is the case, we are suffering. So we have a very good interest to create young leaders and intelligent leaders. It's not only intelligence, it's, it's the no. skillfulness, no. it's the ability. It's ability. Because uh, intelligence is the thing you cannot really uh, change a whole lot, but your skills you can change a whole lot. And that's yeah. where you are. Well, I was well, impressed. Well, the, the, one point, the one point I would say is humility is a leadership mm -hmm. skill. And that one... Yes, good. That one is very, very important. I wrote a blog post about that, but there was a book written by Jocko Willink, and he was in the um, Navy SEALs in Iraq during the war. He wrote a book about what a good leader is, and the one element he said that is so key, because the, a leader in the Navy SEALs in the war if your ego gets in the way, you can lose people's lives. These are very, very important. You, you, people will die if you're not careful. And he said one of the most important elements is humility. And that made me sit back and say, really? Coming from him, that is probably the most important. And that's what I think we'll find. If we have bad leaders, it's often all about them. It's their ego gets in the way. Exactly. Whereas mm -hmm. if it's... If it's humility and they think it's all about, you know, all their team and all everyone. So I think that's one element to learn. And they do learn this in the group. And they learn by the communications and interacting with each other. And the other thing to mention is the way work is changing. Job until last year. I was in Victoria. The other people were in Toronto. Three hours difference. Others were in Belarus and Eastern Europe, and we would have a meeting every week. And we did it over the internet. 
And that is the future. It, the future job is going to be totally different to what it is now. In fact, I equate it to the movie industry is a good example of what's been going on there, is how business and jobs are going to be. When you want to start a movie, get a team together. You get the best directors you can, actors, film crew, etc., and you work on this project, which is a film, or making a movie for whatever it takes, one year or more, sometimes even longer. When that is finished, that project, everybody disbands, and then you go and look for another project. That's what work is going to be like. And you're going to be competing with people around the world because they're going to be able to link, as I did when the last job I had, with people in Europe, in, in uh, an East Coast and a West Coast. And that's how people are going to work. So by doing these online coaching programs that I trying to set up, this will help them as well in their future work. Mm -hmm. They have to learn how to communicate and work as a team remotely. So that's another reason why online makes so much sense to me now. Yeah, this is the change we have to undergo. <laughs> but let, yeah, uh, Go ahead. I, I've been wanting to break in and say a word about, I can understand homeschooled, Families would love this uh, for, for one reason, different ages can be together at the same time, uh, but also the family can see how this helps the family function altogether, including the parents, you know, and yes. it's just a wonderful growth opportunity for everybody and growing in sensitivity and awareness and listening, all these skills, you know, and, and uh, I, I don't know, it, it, it will blossom out into the, the adult life that all these kids have. I'm yeah, sure it, I it, want to go back a moment to the leadership uh, mm -hmm. thing, exactly. because so far what we have in the world mainly, and we see it for instance here in Italy in the newspapers, but what you see it's only about personalities, they are fighting <laughs> one against the other, it's only about them. and. Um, people or whoever must not be young people can also old people learn to have these other skills it will be much more natural to create a different style of leadership you know the humility part mm -hmm. at the end it touches the heart when you 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 see a you humile you say you my person humble humble <laughs> okay a humble person but with the knowledge and with the abilities you will be attracted you people will be attracted to them it's not you are not anymore a leader because you have power to beat them down power but you are yeah. power over yeah but you are a leader because they are coming to you and they have trust in you and this will completely change the landscape of leadership and I hope also in schools actually because wow. it's very very much needed well I, I agree I as I put on the sort of the bio what I sent you I lived in South Africa for 22 years and I returned in 1985 to Canada and I traveled across Canada I'd been away for so long I just thought oh I bought a, a and I traveled from East Coast to West Coast, from North to South for months. And then I got a job. I ended up working in Toronto, which was the only place I could find a job at that time, mainly because of the economy, I believe. But I looked around and I said, what an amazing country this is. But there's one thing that I find lacking, and that is where are our leaders? We don't have enough leaders in this country. And I still say, in, if it, I think it is actually in every country, if I really go down to it. But I was looking at Canada and I'm saying, and it's very hard to look at people who've made some positive change. There are a few, but only a few, and not enough. And I think that is what will make a dramatic change in the world if we can learn to produce some good leaders who have the ability, as you said, to create trust that they are looking after us not about looking after themselves. Yeah. So that and the good 
good thing is that they learn it right in the beginning of their lives because I found, for instance, with music or whatever, you learn later, also languages. I learned English and Italian much later in my life. So I will always have an accent and I won't be really, you know, or as a singer, when you begin late, you will never go into high, uh, highest uh, qualities in, in, in what you are doing. Or, but what you learn from right young age on, you know, for instance, babies who hear their mother sing in, while they are still in the belly, for them singing and music will be the most normal thing of the world. And you don't have the hesitation, oh, am I really, should I really do that? And blah, 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 but maybe I'm not good enough. To them, there is not no idea of that because they are grown into that. So when we create, or you, we, I mean, as a community, create this possibility for young people to these different qualities, like with the mother milk, you say, I yeah. think, you know, for them it will be the most natural thing to do and they won't doubt if it's the right way because it's, and then they will have a different way of being in the world and of assertiveness, which maybe we old people who were used to other ways don't no, have. Just it. a minute here, young lady. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I'm making a joke, but you know, <clears throat> there would be opposition to this change in leadership, this change in style, this change in substance of leadership because it isn't power over people it's power with people for for, for, for doing them, something you know? yeah yeah <clears throat> and uh, uh, a lot of vested interests in the world right. Olds, for example many many corporations are still very old style strictly top-down pyramids uh, you find this yeah. of course in the military and occasionally this is important to preserve, but uh, it's not really great for, in a broad sense, democracy. And know? for life. And it's for not. life. Mm -hmm. And for getting yeah. along with the Well, this, you remind me of a book that I read uh, called Turn the Ship Around. Yeah. It was written by a naval commander who had to take charge of a nuclear submarine in the U.S. Navy. He had to change his whole method of the traditional top-down hierarchy, and he made it bottom-up out that uh, crew on that submarine. Uh, he, it's a very interesting story because trained to take over another submarine, and in those, the way he was trained, that he had to know everything about everybody and everything about that because he made all the decisions him to be a submarine commander. He was given a submarine, not trained to take over. He had studied the submarine and everything, but it, they said, no, you're not going to take over that submarine. You're going to take over another one. The other one that he had to take over had the worst record, and no one wanted to work on that. Everyone wanted to leave. It was not a good He then thought, well, he's always thought this top down is not the best. He's going to try the bottom up became the best submarine to work on in the U.S. Navy after his techniques. It was not easy. So there was a great example of the being changed to the bottom up and it book, turn the ship around. So there is a great example of that new, even in the military. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have now in Europe and also in America many examples of enterprises who are working differently. There is a very interesting book by Frederick Laloux, Reinventing Organizations. He was studying some organization which definitely didn't work in the way <laughs> as others did. And so it is appearing the new way of doing things, but we are still, let's say, at the beginning. But I'm so grateful that there are people here <laughs> who are doing that, you know? Yeah, yeah because the, this is embedded into our culture, that we have authority. Yes. You know? 
you know, yes. wherever we look, in politics, in, in religion, in, in, in organizations, in, in science, etc. You know, you don't, you don't challenge the top dogs you know, at your peril, you know. Uh, and you're not respected. You have to be first in the group and then uh, toe the line. There's so much of that going on. And it's so stultifying and it's, it just destroys the spirits of so many people yeah. Yeah. like us. <clears throat> yeah. I want to bring up another comment of Vivek. He says um, that uh, is a book from Simon Sinek and he says he uh, loves uh, this person, Simon Sinek, and you seem to talk about that book. Is it true? No, that, that book Sinek? I mentioned, Turn the Ship Around, was by the Navy commander, but Simon Sinek is <clears throat> also talking a lot about changing leadership as well. That's his, I agree with Vivek. You know, Simon Sinek is singing the same song about how we should change our leadership in businesses. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's the same thing that Simon is, is Stenick is talking about. Definitely, yes. Great. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, one of the things I mentioned was the power of change and how I realize that I've changed a lot in my life. And if we just sit and always done, well, we get the same old, same old, and we come. I think somebody once said, "You're the prisoner of the past." rather than the pioneer of the future. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Very strongly. Yeah. I, I'm having the time of my life at 75. This is the best time I've ever had because I'm learning, I'm doing so much, and I know that that goes along with what you are trying to promote as well. Rather than just sit and watch television. I don't watch tele I never watch television. I listen to <laughs> podcasts. We don't have one anymore. <laughs> I know. I don't. I, I, I've actually been, I don't even have a place of my own to stay anymore. I, that's uh, something that started this year. Now I was working last year. Young fella. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. No, it's absolutely amazing. Just, and I, you throw yourself in the deep end. Like I just said, oh, okay, I don't have a place to stay. And I now just go and stay in places. I dog sit or I do something, or I have a friend who says, yeah, I can stay for a while. And that changed for me. You saying, "Oh, how is that going to work?" Well, it's been wonderful. <laughs> rowing machine. I, I have my rowing machine. I can fit that in my car, and I row every day. And I listen to podcasts. I listen to TED talks. They're amazing, actually. The some of the ideas that come out from TED talks and mm -hmm. podcasts. That's my education, I, and I'm learning so much all the time. All right. Just out of curiosity. In whose home yes. are you at this moment? I'm in a, a, a friend who's a Toastmaster, and his, this home I'm leaving on Wednesday because it's going to be demolished uh, by the end of the month. And anyway, I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to Australia to spend time two months with my daughter and grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Staying in someone else's house to look, look, after their, yeah, look after their dog while they're in, in Europe. And after that, I don't know where I'm going to be, but I'll be somewhere. Yeah. It, it always works it's just, out. It's so don't amazing. worry about it anymore. Yeah, it's wonderful. I don't worry about it. As long as I have my rowing machine and my blender, because I use a blender, and uh, my computer and some clothes, I'm in, I, I've got rid of almost everything. I have a younger daughter who lives in Victoria. She's taken almost all of my uh, furniture and everything, which she wanted, most of what she wanted. And, and I am... Um, I've gone back to my hitchhiking days of when I was hitchhiked to, to Europe and to Africa. I'm, I'm basically doing that. I've, okay. I've got my second childhood, I think. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. This is oh, a, a big example how we can uh, live our older years, you know, instead of uh, mm -hmm. being fearful of everything. Yeah. This is another teaching opportunity, though, because there are so many of us now. I mean, I. Very few of my earlier generations lived to be my age. And maybe that's been your experience too. But now we've got another know, 20 years anyway, you know, to do whatever the hell we want. <laughs> and uh, and we, we can be children again after those 
years, I've had decades to, of yeah. chores yeah. and duties and, and responsibilities yeah. uh, are behind us. I'm having the time of my life. Yeah. It is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And I have children who call me Fred, <laughs> my friends. Um, a parade or a, they closed down one of the streets for some function uh, this summer and I was walking the street with my, my daughter and her friend and I don't know how many children came up to me and said I wow I know a lot of young people here I didn't realize but you know I haven't seen you for a while where you been and it was wonderful to meet them I have friends now in this town where I've been only nine years now I have hundreds of friends from young to old. It's just been an amazing time in my life. It's absolutely phenomenal. So this is what I say, the power of change, because what it does is it forces you to and accommodate. And, and the benefits are you became innovative because you say, oh, I got to find a way to do this. And, and you and you do all sorts of advancements. So I. I just throw myself into these things and say, well, I don't know what's going to happen. Let's go for it. Same with this coaching young people. I figure the online coaching is definitely a must. Mm -hmm. Promoting, I'm looking for the technology. I'm looking for young, young people because I can see the benefits of what I've seen in the face-to-face -face coaching groups that I've been running and still run where I see the mm -hmm. future. But yeah, the power of change, I mean, it's unbelievable. Just go and do stuff and don't just the challenge is uh, you're the prisoner of the past if you just keep doing what you've been doing. Become a pioneer of the future. Let's just go for it. We can. Us older people have a lot of abilities to do things. So let's do it. And this is exactly the, the good news for older people who yeah. think we're 60, uh, 70. No. Oh. <laughs> now <laughs> death comes. Oh. You know? We don't <laughs> believe in, in, in that the life can be even more fully lived, as you say. And we had uh, seen studies which say that people, the older they get, generally they get happier. So <clears throat> when we put into the mix the curiosity, I mean, we are like you, we are watching every evening something on internet, some, some talk, not necessarily yep. any, well, sometimes a film, sometimes maybe once a week, yeah. but always something which we say, oh, I have learned something mm -hmm. today, you know? Yeah. And this is so exciting. I mean, to, to yeah. get to know the world finally in a, in what it provides us in a way that we can choose what we want to learn, you know? Before you couldn't really choose. I mean, maybe you had a library, but then you had to read all these books before we, you understood something but today with the internet you can first of all get the information information in your room and second of all as we do now you can connect with people directly don't call and then you don't understand the voice and then you hear only the voice and you don't know how they how they look like i have the, uh, had the experience when i have talks with like we have it was also with him, by the way, we knew first on internet. And then when you see the person in life, you feel already friends, you feel already acquainted, mm -hmm. you know? Why, when you hear only the telephone, telephone is fine, no, for 1900 something. Yeah. But uh, when you hear only the telephone, you have imaginations how this person could look like, and then often you are sort of disappointed because your fantasy is not reality. But with these means, and it's it's a, we have no idea what will come out and my how do you say my um, message to to all the people is don't get yourself by, by technology it's not so so difficult at the beginning computers were difficult 30 years ago but now also live streaming google hangouts is still the most difficult one but there are so so easier ones you know just go out and learn it mm -hmm. ask somebody ask us you know and there are other people around there's Roland around there there is a Vivek around uh, they they all are happy to help you to to connect to to be you know mm -hmm. up to date <laughs> <laughs> indeed they are yeah 
Yeah, and of course we find out some things about the world we don't want to find out. Yeah, too. that's also the thing that yeah. you might find out things which you didn't know and which were uh, sort of oh very much oh. hidden. Yeah. And then uh, you hear that and you think, oh God, and I lived in an illusion. But it's part of that, you know, and it's good that we we know more about the world in all, in the inner world and the outer world and in relationships and everything. But it's his his talk. We yeah. should let him talk instead of Hush up. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you have still a few minutes. You you might uh, do uh, yeah, sort of you say uh, yeah, the one thing to sort of to end on is something that Nelson Mandela said. Now just to put it in context, I lived in South Africa when Nelson Mandela was in jail. Yeah. It was called a banned person. I didn't even know he existed and I wasn't allowed to know he existed, that he was in jail. It was illegal to publish his name in any publication. The government controlled and censored everything. He existed. We heard rumors until I left in 1985, then, you know, and he got out of jail, I think, in 1990. thing he said, and this struck me because of living in Africa and traveling in Africa, this is so true. Education, he said, is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. That's what Nelson Mandela said. I believe that is what this is about to change the world and help educate children to become leaders will be, as Nelson Mandela, the most powerful weapon we can use. And with the technology we have today, as you mentioned, and make it positive, and that's what I'm trying to do, is trying to make a very powerful, positive change in leadership by helping young people. So that's what I believe is all about. Wonderful. Mandela for saying that. Uh, and this is a story if I have time. Uh, in about 1981 or 82, I traveled up from South Africa into uh, Zimbabwe and into Zambia. When I had hitchhiked through your, uh, through South Africa, or from through Africa, those were not, that's not the name of those countries. They were called Northern Rhodesia and Southern Rhodesia. Sure. And I got a snapshot in 1963 of what it was like. And it was just a snapshot traveling through. 20 years later, I go back there and I said, wow, this is not good. This is worse. These people are living in worse conditions than I saw 20 years ago. They're gone backwards. When you go into a shop, there was nothing in the stores. That was, I mean, it was just to me. How, what's going on? Why is everything worse? There's hardly any goods. They don't have money. They, uh, the one fella didn't have uh, money to buy uh, a bicycle tube. And you couldn't get bicycle tubes in Zambia. He had to go across the border to Zimbabwe to get one because they didn't have any. It was so bad. I thought, wow, this is not progress. What can be the solution, I thought. And I said, well, the only thing I can think is education. And that came to my mind after a lot of thought about what I had seen. And then to read what Nelson Mandela said, you know, decades later about education. I think that's the answer. If we can help and educate, and us old people have some abilities, and it makes keeps us young. Age, so this is easy. So I'm looking for people who want to make a change, maybe parents, uh, whatever, who would be willing to contact me. What can we do? And that's really what it's all about, in my opinion. So education. And what Nelson Mandela said, in my experience, is so true, how we can change the world. Yeah, and we can educate ourselves, and we can also now educate across the borders, you know. I mean, yeah. I've heard, I think, in, in, in Saudi Arabia, is it Saudi Arabia? It, I, I'm, <sighs> I'm not sure anymore, but the women who are watching YouTube, it's a huge amount of, 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 of women watching YouTube. In because private. In private, yeah. yeah. Because mm -hmm. they can get 
a day education by watching things, which they could never have in their countries. And when you say about Africa, maybe that will be uh, the future there too, because they begin to have all their cell phones and they begin to have a bit of internet. So that may really change the, the world. And as far as I know, uh, I mean, not having educated people is a power uh, is a means of power you know yes. and it was used yeah. very very exactly now there are still places in in i think wasn't it armenia where uh, some women um, children are not allowed female children to go to school yeah that was a girl in yeah. the, uh, in the class of my friend in germany and she said in her country she wouldn't be able to go to school well afghanistan afghanistan was it uh, mm -hmm. saying no, where girls weren't be. allowed and yeah. and uh, malala the young lady who got the Nobel Peace Prize from, a, yes. I think it was Pakistan. She was shot because she was a girl going to school. And the, I think it was the Taliban did not want her to go to school. Was promoting teaching girls. And there's an example. I mean, that that is, so education is seen as a uh, threat to people who want power. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so today with this technology, Thanks God we have it yes. and please let's keep it us safe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we, we keep the internet on. Yeah. yeah the power can uh, the power of change can spread. Yeah. By education, by knowing, by mm -hmm. being aware of things. It is so mm -hmm. important. I really I mean I see my life also as a continuous learning and the more I learn in all directions the more I feel, you know, well there's there's hope for everybody in the world my understanding is low-level satellite there's a company about to release i think it's being funded out of some large organizations around the world including i believe i think richard branson's behind it and some large japanese companies to have low-level satellites allow us to have internet access all around the world mm. cover the whole world so if you're at sea or you're in the Arctic or then wherever you are, access and that if that comes to fruition, which I believe it's about to be launched, if that and is the this case, this will really change the world. The secrecies yeah. which are still happening, yeah. they won't yes. have a long life anymore. No. And I'm really looking forward to that. That the truth yeah. becomes a value because <laughs> you cannot hide so easily the things anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that's right so that i think is the whole power of change yeah I mean, so there's mm -hmm. not only we just don't get into our old routines and as i said become a you know prisoner of the past mm -hmm. we can now at our age you know second childhood we have an opportunity it's unbelievable what we can accomplish so, and so we thank you very very much great and, talk. yeah yeah and uh, it's a very good example how and pass the lives, you know. Yes. Maybe begin yep. with their grandchildren and <laughs> and their friends and so on. There is innumerable ways of doing this. Become creative and finding out how we can mm -hmm. do that. That's wonderful. And if you don't know how, get the book from Fred. <laughs> <laughs> what's that book, Fred? Huh? <laughs> Tell oh. us what's that book. Yeah, you can go on my website and get it. It's I got it. It's becoming brilliant. Oh, yes. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. So, thank you. And it very says, you know, coaching our future leaders. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Wonderful. They can get a free copy. They can download it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's downloadable. So, if they want to look at it, and then they can ask me questions. And what I hope to ultimately do is set up a group of coaches and start asking questions because I've learned what I've seen there is not what I've worked with over the years. It's all their suggestions, so I wanted it to be an ongoing. Maybe Heidi has some idea, or Mark has some idea, or and and oh, this worked. We had this problem, but this is how we sorted it out, and can make this even work much better. Not one person again. It's a matter of so the book, as far as I'm concerned, is an ongoing. You know, all the ideas just put it in one place, so that somebody new can get all the ideas so far. 
um, I could go on why I, I did that because when I worked in the gold mines in South Africa, we used to have problems and we, I belonged to the Mine Managers Association. We used to publish papers every week and they were published in or every month and we publish them in volumes. So whenever you had a problem, you could go back and look in the books. Oh, yeah, this was what they did about it. And that's the same thing what I visualize this to be. A co-creation for change. There we that's go. That's wonderful. Yes. So thank you very much and have a good time in Australia. And everybody who is yeah. watching now or later, yeah. please contact him and get yeah. inspired about what uh, okay. <laughs> Fred is talking about. So, right. Power of change. <laughs> Bye-bye. So live long and prosper. Oh, whoops, they keep coming back. Sorry. <laughs> <Bye -bye. laughs>